John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for the Advent reading as well. All right. John 3.16. <laughs> Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, gifts and gift giving. And uh, this is something that we encounter in the holidays. Uh, around Christmas time. I pray that you would give us wisdom today, wisdom for the holidays, wisdom from your word. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. So I want to talk a little bit about gifts and gift giving today. Uh, some of my favorite memories of Christmas growing up have to do with gifts. Uh, maybe some of you like receiving gifts or giving gifts. Uh, but one of the things that I, my brother and I like to do is go to Toys R Us. You guys remember that place? May it rest in peace. Uh, toys are us. Uh, we would go there and we would pick out Christmas gifts for each other. And one year, my brother went in and he bought his Christmas gift for me. And then my mom came out and we got swapped places. And I went in and bought a Christmas gift for him. And then that year when we were opening up our Christmas gifts, we had bought the exact same Lego set for each other uh, from Toys R Us. So fond memories. Maybe you can recall uh, to your mind, a time when you received a gift uh, that you really appreciate uh, or, or gave a gift that you really enjoyed giving. Now, I know some of us, maybe some of like the secretive, uh, kind of like hidden, hidden of us, uh, we, we don't actually like the gift season all that much. Maybe this is you where when people give you a gift, it kind of makes you nervous. Like you get a little sweaty and you're like, oh, no, now I have to give them a gift, right? I, uh, or, or what am I going to get them? Uh, so I know that not everyone enjoys gift giving, uh, but many of us do, and it can be a very encouraging time. Now, my original plan for this uh, sermon was to look at gift giving from the book of Proverbs, uh, because we've been kind of in Proverbs this fall. Uh, that's why this is called Wisdom for the Holidays. Uh, but the more I stu studied Proverbs, the more I read this book and looked at the passages, I realized it didn't have a whole lot to say about gift giving. Uh, so it's always nice when you plan something and it doesn't work. Uh, but it does give us a few things about gifts that I think are worth sharing. Uh, it says not to bribe a judge. So if any of you were planning on doing that, uh, bribing a judge with a gift, uh, that's not a good thing. Uh, it also says, it kind of like admits that gift giving can soothe anger and that it can help facilitate relationships. It doesn't necessarily say do that, uh, but it just kind of admits that's how it works sometimes. It doesn't look kindly on those who say they are going to and then do not give the gift. Uh, so don't do that. Don't uh, kind of talk big and then don't follow through. Uh, it does say that gift giving can complicate relationships and if misused, do harm. And so, what's the application? Never give Christmas gifts. <laughs> right? uh, I saw one parent was like, yes, that's my budget, right? Uh, I'm budgeting for that. No, I don't think that's the application at all. The Bible encourages generosity. The Bible uh, kind of uh, talks about gifts in other ways as we look at the, the greater story of the Bible outside of the book of Proverbs. And it encourages us to give, to give freely, to give genuinely, to give with no strings attached. And so as I was looking at the Bible and kind of looking through the passages to see what it had to say about gifts and, and kind of gift giving, it's kind of an interesting theme to look in the Bible for, I fell on one verse that really reminded me of what gift giving is all about. And it's this common verse, maybe you've heard it before, but it's probably one of the most famous verses from the Bible, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is perhaps uh, one of the most central verses in the entire Bible. It just beautifully sums up what the whole Bible is about, what the whole story is leading to. But this verse never particularly struck me as a Christmas verse. I don't know if we ever really read it that often at Christmas time. 
But I want to slow down. And we'll look at this verse again. I want you to hear the very first line. For God so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved the world that he gave. Now this verse is about the most important gift ever given. But it's also about the giver. It's about the character of God himself. That the God of Christianity, the God of the Bible, the God of this great big story is a God who gives. God gave. God gave. And if we were to open up the very first pages of the Bible, the very first lines of the Bible, we would discover a God who is a giver. Genesis 1-1, which we already heard uh, this morning, says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I want you to stop and think about that for a moment. Did God need to do that? Did God need to call all of creation, all of existence into being? No. God did that freely. He, he, did, it, uh, he did it where he, he, he gave to us. He gave to this world. He gave to this. He gave everything we look around and see is a gift from God. In Genesis 1 alone, like we see the things that God gives. He gives light and darkness, day and night, water, dry ground, vegetation, the stars, the birds, the animals. Anything you see is a gift of God. And who does he give it to? You and me. Genesis 1.26 says this, that God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the, in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. You know what God could have done? He could have uh, kind of created us to be like the animals, right? Just kind of going through existence, doing what we're supposed to do, uh, being in right, right relationship with him, worshiping him, and that's it. But instead, God took everything, all of creation, and set you and me over it. And he made us in his image. That means he made us so that we can know God, so that we can be in relationship with him. Think of all the things that God gifted to us. He freely gifted us everything, (laughs) all of creation. I mean, we celebrate Christmas as the birth of Jesus, but like this is the first Christmas, the first gift day, Genesis 1-1. God is the great giver. And so as we think about navigating the holidays and Christmas time, I want us to think about this gift. I want us to think about the giver. Part of Christianity is learning how to follow the ways of Christ, to learning how to follow the ways of God himself, to model your character after God's character. If God is a giver, that means as believers, we also should be givers. That We should give to those around us, give to those who can really do nothing for us. We can't do anything for God. And so, as you think about Christmas, how might you give freely, <laughs> with no strings attached? How might you give out of your creativity? God gives creatively. How might you give out of your love? For God so loved the world that he gave. See, when I give this way, when you give this way, what are we doing? We're we're reflecting a little bit of the character of God himself. Maybe you don't think about gift giving that way, but it can be that way. It doesn't have to be just like this consumption of material goods. That's certainly what Christmas can become. And that's what we become after the fall, right? We just, we just begin to consume and consume and consume creation. But our gift giving doesn't have to be that way. See, God gave us all these wonderful things, perfect creation. What did we do with it? <laughs> We treated it really well. (laughs) We did fine. We immediately broke the gift. See, God gave and we broke. God gave and we broke. 
And that's the story of the Bible over and over and over again. God gave us the gift of his presence in the Garden of Eden. We broke it. Not God himself, but that relationship. God came to a man named Abraham that he named Abraham. He he put his blessing upon Abraham and his descendants, Isaac, Jacob, the Israelite people. And what do we see them doing? Breaking the gift, breaking the relationship with God. Abraham sinned. (laughs) He was a sinful man. And so were his descendants. The golden calf. God had just given, given the Israelite people the gift of his presence at Mount Sinai. What do they do? They break the gift. They create an idol and they begin to worship it. Gift broken. Gift broken. Gift broken. God gave and we broke. I want you to imagine that you are a knitter. I know, I, I, like, especially like the teenage guys, like you guys are knitters in this moment, right? Just imagine, you're, you're, you're making a nice sweater right now. Maybe some of you are. Let's just identify who are the actual knitters in this room. Just go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, we got two. So this, this sermon illustration really speaks to the vast majority of everyone here. Everyone is a knitter. Now, if you know anything about knitting, you know that it takes time. You can tell I'm married to a knitter, so this is where this sermon illustration came from. It takes time, right? And imagine that you are knitting a big, a, a beautiful sweater for a friend. It has an intricate pattern. It's, it's colorful. It's their favorite colors, and they are a, a big and tall friend, so this is taking a lot of time. This sweater is taking a lot of time, and yet you're doing it because you love them. And it's Christmas, and you're so excited to give the gift to your friend, and they, they unwrap it, and they say, oh, how lovely. Thank you. But you can tell there's not really that same spark in their eyes that you were looking for. You're like, well, you know what? It'll turn to, to winter or they'll go to a, a Christmas party and they'll, they'll break out their Christmas season sweater. Maybe they're a hipster and they'll wear, wear it in July. I, I don't know. And you're like, okay, I'll come back and uh, they'll, they'll, they'll like it. So you leave. A few weeks later, you visit your friend. You're, you're having coffee or tea or whatever. And you notice there's a box over there in the, in the corner. That box says savers. You're like, oh, you know, my friend wouldn't do that. Like, my friend would not put this sweater that I spend so much time in to, into the savers box. You're like, but I'm thirsty, and the, the box happens to be, like, in the general vicinity of the, the kitchen sink. So I have to watch bo- walk by the savers box. If you walk by, you look in, your heart breaks because the big and tall sweater is in the savers box. That's a little bit like what we have done to God. He knit together this beautiful creation. He put together his people to rule over it and to love it, to appreciate it. And we put it in the saver's box. See, God gave and we broke. And it's easy to blame Adam and Eve. I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. Adam and Eve are better than you. (laughs) They're better than me. They are the very best humans ever. They weren't born in sin. And they still threw the gift away. So we would have made the same mistake if we were back then, and we're continuing to make the same mistake. As God gives us gifts, he gives us himself, he gives us his presence, he gives us creation, what do we do with it? We pollute it, we break it. He gives us marriages. What do we do with those? We break them. He gives us our minds and we fill them with things that do us no good. He gives us our family and our children and those things are wonderful, but another way we can break things is by actually elevating those things, elevating them above the giver. Whenever we take something that God has given us, a bit of creation, a bit of a, a good thing, and we say, wow, that, that thing is wonderful, I love that thing, and that becomes our focus, we actually elevate it above the giver, and there is something in the very nature of that thing that breaks. Because then suddenly we're no longer treating 
our marriage or our family or our money or our career the way it should be treated. And things just don't work right. God gave and we broke. But there's hope. Because God so loved the world that he gave. Maybe you are the friend who put the sweater in the saver's box. A true friend would love and forgive and still care. It would hurt, (laughs) but you would still have that relationship. We have a God who continues to give even though we don't deserve it because he loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave. So what did he give? He gave his presence, and that's been the, kind of the story he gave of himself, and that's been the story throughout the entire Bible. But he elevated the gift. He elevated the gift by giving his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Now the son is equal with the father. The son is God himself. So there's like this beautiful, like mysterious thing happening that we can't fully grasp. But God is giving of himself and yet he's also giving his son the one that he loves, that the father loves. See, God gave humankind, all of us, you and me, he gave us the best gift imaginable. And we took that gift and we were like, yes, this is the best gift. And we worshiped that gift and we treated that gift really well. It's not how it went. Jesus told a parable uh, during his ministry of a man who planted a vineyard. He put a lot of time and effort into a vineyard. I imagine that took a long time to plant. He built a wall. He dug a wine press. He built a watchtower. And then he rented out the vineyards to tenants. He moved away. And the harvest time came, and the owner sent uh, one of his servants Go and collect some fruit from this vineyard. Collect my portion of the income. And the tenants, when they saw the servant coming, they beat him and they sent him away. So the the owner sent another servant and another. And they struck and killed the second one. They struck the first and killed the second. And then this happened. Luke 20, 13 says, Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my son whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. This is what happened. But when the tenants saw him, they talked the matter over. This is the heir, they said. Let's kill him. The inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when Jesus originally told this parable, he was speaking out against the religious leaders of his day. The, the teachers of the law, the chief priests, the, the tenants who should have welcomed him with open arms, the son. They rejected him. They rejected the gift, but they also rejected the gift giver. God gave, and I, I want to say that we broke. We can't just blame them back then. So I think all of us in that moment are guilty. This is a sad thing. This is a disappointing moment (laughs) in the story of mankind. God gave this beautiful gift and we turned away. I want us to think for a moment about the times that we have encountered sadness or grief during Christmas time. I want you to think about that moment Maybe, maybe it's like a simple sadness, like a kind of a silly sadness where you gave someone a gift. <laughs> they didn't really like it. Or you, re- you, you didn't get the gift that you wanted. And something in your heart said, oh, I didn't get what I wanted. Or maybe much more seriously where uh, you were going through the holidays, Christmas, and a relationship was broken. Maybe by distance, um, by conflict, uh, perhaps even by death. And you experience grief and sadness and that loss and that brokenness. 
Well, I think even in that moment, we can reflect the character of God. So I think it probably brought God a lot, a lot of grief, a great deal of sadness and grief that we would reject his son. I don't claim to know the mind of God, but I do know we're made in his image, and that's how we would respond. And yet, what does God do? What, what does God do in the midst of our rejection of him? He loves us. God knew that we were going to reject his son, and he still sent his son. This is the gift. This is the God who is a giver, the good God who gives and gives and gives, even though we break and break and break. God gave his son, and we broke him. <laughs> John 3.16 tells us there is hope. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. And this son had a mission. This this son had a a mission to rescue the tenants. To rescue the rejectors of all things good. God gave his son for us. So God doesn't want us to be stuck forever in this broken world. He wants to restore the gift, the good creation. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. See, what this is saying is that God sent his son so that if we repent and believe in him, we receive eternal life. You know what eternal life is? It's not just really living a long, long time. (laughs) Eternal life is God himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And John 17, 3 says, For this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So Christianity is not just saying a prayer and getting like a get-out-of-hell-free card. (laughs) Christianity is encountering the God of life experiencing him, knowing him, being in relationship with him. Jesus makes this possible. You know how Jesus did this? He reflects his father's character too. He's also a giver. 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake, for your sake, he became poor so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. This isn't talking about, like, my bank account's, like, full. This is talking about true riches, eternal life with God, an eternal relationship with God himself. See, the Son gave, the God gave his Son for us. Jesus gave away the wealth of heaven He made himself nothing. He took on human flesh. He humbled himself. He became impoverished. He became poor, Uh, not just economically poor, but spiritually poor as his father turned away from him so that you and I might experience the richness of God's love. Jesus didn't just give some away or partially away. Jesus gave it all away. Jesus gave it all away so that you can experience the fullness of God. And so the question for us is, how will you respond? What will you give? What will you give to God? There are only two options. The first is nothing. Continue to go through life, enjoying the gifts, loving the the gifts, the things God gives you, your career, your family, whatever, where you live. That's one option. But that option leads to being cast out of the vineyard. You miss the harvest. The second option is to give yourself. To give everything about you to God. To give every part of your life. That doesn't mean you're not going to be able to enjoy your family. If you, oh, i got to give my family to God, <laughs> therefore I can never love them. No, it's like the exact opposite. You get to experience the goodness and the, and the fullness of your family as you give them to God. 
It's only by being in right relationship with the giver that you get to enjoy the gifts. But it starts with giving everything. It starts with giving yourself who you are to God. God wants to know you. God wants to be in a relationship with you. He gave us everything, including his son, including himself, so that so that we could experience his goodness and so that we could give everything back to him. Not because he's selfish, but because it's like this beautiful cycle. God gives and we receive. We give. God gives and we receive. And then we give back. See, the cycle is broken. No longer is it God gave, we broke. And so as you go into the Christmas season, as you think about this idea of God giving his son for us, the challenge is to say, how, do, how does this, how do I then put this into how I buy gifts this Christmas? Or the ways that I give my time or I give my money or I give of myself, or I give my love as I give my patience to those around me. But I think if, John 3.16 is at the core of our Christmas season, then we're going to do okay. If we let like, the meditation of our heart focus on that passage and, and focus on Christ Jesus and focus on the giver, I think God will give you the wisdom to navigate those decisions this Christmas. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for John 3.16. Thank you for the gift of Christmas. We love you, we need you, we're excited to be in relationship with you. Help us all to enjoy your presence, to enjoy the giver this Christmas season, even as we give gifts to each other. Do you fill us with your Holy Spirit? Fill us with your presence? Help us to love each other, to give good gifts this Christmas. Help us to receive the best gift of all, Christ Jesus. Lord, if, if any of us don't know that gift yet, do you just work on our hearts? Do you give us the faith to believe to give us the gift of eternal life, to give us the gift of Jesus. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. Please bless our closing worship and offering. In Jesus' name, amen.